So everyone, I'm going to talk about um, the pig piece of the puzzle here, um, which is basically 10% of the global export in food, which is uh, North America, United States, Canada, and Mexico. Um, so basically this is the largest piece of the farming puzzle right now. Um, uh, second is China and then India and uh, Europe and areas like that. So uh, it's a very important uh, area. So I'm gonna start in kind of a funny way. Uh, we're gonna look at how much money is being made in farming. So one acre gets you about $600, $700. Um, it can get you $1,000 or more in some areas like in Florida or California. So, and also Washington and there's some areas around Chicago and along the East Coast that are making pretty good money uh, per acre. So another way to look at it is total income. Uh, per farm so you can see uh, a lot of farms are making upwards of almost a million dollars per farm but most are making around two hundred thousand dollars per year but of that shockingly um, only about forty thousand dollars is profit so you can see uh, yes many farms are making two hundred thousand dollars a year or more um, but uh, the average is about forty thousand uh, dollars in the United States so a little bit of shaming here is thinking about how much land does it take to feed one person um it takes at least two football fields uh one certainly one football field worth of land uh, sometimes two football fields but believe it or not in the united states it takes 10 football fields um one hectare that's times 10 uh, so it's 100 meters by 100 meters basically the united states is the worst place to live um, for uh, consumption so we are just uh, needing 10 football fields per person uh, to uh, get the food out there so that's unbelievable amount here you can see the numbers as well um, you can see that uh, even some places are up to 16 8 uh, most of Europe is four four football fields or more six between three and say seven or eight even right so um, but uh, Africa you can see is doing kind of the best um, so I want to start with this just so you could get an idea um, a football field is quite large you should uh, stand on a football field and realize that it takes at least two of those to feed you every year and for most Americans it could be eight or even more so unbelievable amount of land uh, required eight football fields so uh, basically uh, this is a lot of land and uh, actually it takes uh, a lot of land in order to feed people so uh, interesting thing is there isn't a whole lot of land available um, but if you look at these uh, value maps income per farm you kind of see there's a lot of money being made right here along the Mississippi River down in uh, Memphis area so uh, that is one very important area to look at we're gonna look at that in detail um, you can see that the diversity of crops also matters a lot so the higher the diversity the more money typically that is being made so there's more diversity here along the Mississippi and more diversity in California and therefore you make more money in the farm so that's an important thing to think about um, actually there's a lot more farming being done in the Midwest but it's not the kind of income it's maybe more total income but in terms of per farm uh, some of these other areas are more important significantly so in terms of the farming you can kind of see it's uh, basically maybe one fourth or one fifth of the total economy of North America um, you can isolate this and look at particularly where the farming is so you can see soybeans wheat and corn uh, being the major players but again the bigger farms are maybe soybean farms and corn farms but actually they're not making as much money as the uh, more diverse farms uh, which is an interesting point to make um, so uh, the soil map is also super interesting you might want to look at the geological map but you can kind of see uh, that this soil here the pink area is pretty much the ideal but actually right in here is this orange area which you do see in uh, kind of uh, some of the jungleish areas or even in South America you see a lot more of this orange area so this is actually even better farmland um, and the most uh, some of the most special land also is in the California Valley here and you can see um, that there 
is kind of some different dirt there as well. Um, it's actually kind of a drier dirt, uh, believe it or not, uh, than some of the stuff that you see along the Mississippi River. It's a little blacker and actually even better. And then here you can see some of this purple dirt um, in here, which is almost floodplain. And then you see floodplain, which is uh, dark uh, or the bluish color. Here's a map that you can load up into Google Earth if you want to get the pixel data and kind of see the dense vegetation for the entire United States. Unfortunately, it's nice to look at uh, kind of the global map, so it'd be nice to get that instead. Um, now, you can see the planting schedule. I thought this is super helpful just to see. So you can see April is when most of the planting goes, goes on. And then uh, by uh, June, all the planting is pretty much done and then it's all growing. Harvesting starts in about September here and actually even finishes at the end of December uh, for some areas of the United States. So this is kind of really hard to say for the United States because again, uh, when you look at the climate map, which let me catch you here, the climate map, you can see the climate definitely does vary here. So you have kind of this lighter uh, green, which is pretty good. Um, and then you have even, it doesn't really even show, but there's actually uh, even warmer stuff down in here. So this climate has to do with uh, temperature plus uh, the rainfall and a lot of different factors. And you can see the far tip of Florida becomes uh, very good farmland. Uh, for some reason, there's a lot of sugar cane down there. Also in Louisiana, you see some sugar cane being uh, produced. Um, but uh, there's definitely a need for uh, more variety of farms in the United States. So just in case you're worried and you're wanting to try to make money doing this, let's look at these maps a little more carefully here. Uh, so you can see uh, this area here down in Florida, there's a couple pockets here, uh, just kind of southwest of Atlanta. There's a pocket here, um, kind of southwest of Washington, DC, California, and then actually Mexico gets a lot of farming too. So it'd be nice to get this whole map for the entire earth. So you can kind of see uh, what the values are, but it's, uh, getting difficult to get this kind of accuracy because you have quite a lot of, these are per zip code. So you can see here, this is the value of the entire farm. Um, and then again, here is the value per acre uh, in terms of profit that you're making. So, uh, or actually the crops sold. So again, I would say only about a couple hundred dollars of this actually is what your profit is actually on this. So you might sell $700, but then only have uh, half of that as actual money that you get income. So some of this data needs to be uh, carefully thought about. So again, here's the main map uh, that I wanted to look at um, in terms of the farming region. So the blue areas are pretty much uh, very certainly farming. Now, the sad thing about this is that most of this, uh, you can click on this, which is really great and it will show you what that is. So that's soybeans. Uh, let's see if we can get a corn one in here. There's a corn with yellow. Um, it's actually most fun to do California uh, because you get into almonds and you get a variety of foods, uh, which is super interesting to see. I wish we could get Mexico here because uh, actually Mexico is a vital part of the United States food source. I would say in some grocery stores, you can have 50% of the food or more from Mexico in the wintertime. I would say almost all of it in the wintertime in some states uh, is from Mexico and that travels about 3000 miles. Um, but this is a super awesome map, definitely worthwhile zooming in here, uh, finding the farms. Uh, it's really unbelievable amount of data here that is just super helpful. Um, and I really love just looking at the farms and then kind of looking at the satellite imagery as well. Uh, but let's go back to this so you can kind of see. So again, part of the problem is so much is soybeans. Uh, there's wheat here um, and then corn. So pork being pretty heavy too, even more than beef, interestingly, um, in North America. So again, let's take a quick look at the soil map. We'll take a look at this one here. This is the planting schedule. And then here is the forestry map. So you can kind of see that uh, basically, uh, there is some pretty big problems with forestry in the United States. Um, basically, there's a whole lot of agriculture being done. Uh, they call this grassland, uh, but it's basically uh, been almost entirely farmed in some regions. Here's the population distribution. Uh, super interesting to see kind of what the cities are. If you zoom in, you can start to see Chicago basically 
you know, this, you have to go pretty much 50 or even 100 miles outside the city before you get into farmland. Um, it's pretty much true uh, 50 miles or more in most of these cities um, to get to farmland. Um, here's the river map. I use this extensively to try to find out uh, where the interesting farms are. Um, you can see here, uh, I can even turn off this map and do this map and it's a little bit easier to see the rivers um, on this map. So you can kind of change uh, what you want to see. So you can see California Central Valley here and how the river actually has been uh, depleted in the southern part of California. Um, but basically this is a really amazing Mississippi River system. Uh, super awesome to think about. But in uh, a lot of ways, almost 100% of the farming has been, uh, a, you know, agriculture has to do with irrigation. So it's really amazing how much irrigation matters. So you basically have to pull the water off of the river and feed the farm. Um, so here's a list of all the data for the, uh, let me see if I can zoom out here. Sorry about this. Uh, but you can see uh, basically which, uh, sorry about this. Well, I'll have to figure this out a little bit later. But anyway, um, so these soybeans, wheat, sugar, sugarcane, and so on is basically the top priority at once. So you can kind of see the values here in terms of tons. The international climate map is super interesting to see. You can kind of see that um, some of the shape that we saw on the 3D map. Um, you can kind of see how we match uh, up pretty similarly with Europe, but actually it's a different climate entirely. Uh, than Europe, um, but uh, interesting to see that it's uh, maybe slightly similar. Um, so here's again that question of how much land area, that's the idea of maybe it takes at least two of these, probably eight of these to feed you every year, which is an unbelievable amount of land. So this is how I downloaded the data to get the crop data from uh, the FAO, if you're interested in taking a look at that. So I'm gonna do this just because it's super important to see uh, the rain map. So here is January, and then we're going to do February and March. So the one thing you notice is we actually don't get a lot of rain in the United States. Um, so that means irrigation is even more important um, in the United States. So you start to get rain in May there and then now you see it coming in mostly in Florida and then July also in the south there August and it starts to dry up again in September here you still got most of the rain kind of out east and October now this is even kind of getting into snowy months November now you see most of this rain actually coming along the coast here and actually California not getting too much rain at all. So that's all irrigation as well. So the big moral of the story here is that uh, in the United States, there's basically not a whole lot of rain and actually all over the world, there's not a whole lot of rain, uh, believe it or not. So the river system becomes very important, um, but you can use kind of July, uh, these middle months, maybe May, uh, as the uh, more significant rain month. I'll just put this in here, the earthquake map, kind of seeing if you're interested in listening to the earth in terms of farming, uh, you're outside a lot, might as well listen to the earth and see what's going on. So again, here is the main map. Um, I will actually try to turn this off. Um, so you can add population into this. Um, it takes a while to load because the data is one kilometer data. So I will even zoom in and see what we can do. So you can start to see some of the population areas hit in there um, and where the farming actually is. So quite interesting, you can see this kind of Memphis dot here, this Southern uh, Illinois, that's St. Louis area. So you can kind of see this is where we start to get some farming area. And there actually is quite a lot of population in California and on the West Coast right in there. So uh, pretty interesting to see. I'm gonna turn off the population just for a second uh, and actually see what we can do to get this map. So this shows you the land and farming. So you can see it actually turned a little bit whiter in those regions uh, that had farming. Um, so uh, that's all the opacity here. So, uh, but super helpful to see 
uh, this. Now, again, the best place to start if you're just wanting to find a farm to work with or to get to know is this map. So definitely um, there's a lot of boring spaces like we discussed with soybeans and corn only. So Midwest has a very significant problem because there's not a whole lot of rain. So what are you going to do? Irrigate it or just grow corn? So the problem is they grow corn and soybeans because it doesn't require a whole lot of water and irrigation. Um, and then other areas they can get a little more complicated as they get south uh, to where we saw the rain uh, in Florida and other areas. Um, but quite honestly, there really isn't a lot of diversity in the farms, um, except for in California, which is unbelievably irrigated. Um, I wish I could go in and zoom in. Um, let me pause this for a little bit and I'll zoom in to show you California. So here you can start to see some of the problems and solutions. So you can see that some farmers maybe just completely have figured out how to do their type of farming in a certain region. So actually there is a lot of diversity in here, but actually it's kind of perhaps even dominated by certain types of farms in certain regions. That could be because of climate, could be because of irrigation problems, could be because of soil problems. There's even areas, vast areas that are unfarmable in California now. So, um, but you can certainly look at this map carefully. Um, these purple ones, I believe are grapes. Let's just click on one of those here. So it's grapes there. Um, and there's a lot of like nuts. So you can see, I think this is almonds probably here. Um, it says open land, um, but we'll see if we can find one. So there's almonds quite a lot of those in here and you can see all the way up into northern california so i kind of stopped this around the bay area but you basically have sacramento and then a uh, part of northern california up here so it can be super interesting uh, to look at this and find out exactly what's going on with the farms there are some other varieties but believe it or not there really is a question even in diversity even in california so uh, it is really fun to try to find a secret hidden farm, but uh, a lot of them are kind of difficult to find. So I'll go back to the big map here um, of North America. I just want to emphasize how important the farming is in Mexico. So basically there's a little bit of slur right around there and then a big part along here and actually some other farms even along the coast here that are very important in Mexico and the entire Yucatan Peninsula may someday be farmed. It's basically kind of foresty right now, but this whole area um, is kind of a debate and then Central America and even the Caribbean. And I wanna do a whole separate topic on Central America. It's super interesting farming, uh, the banana industry and a lot of other things. So, but for now, uh, this is North America. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the discussion. Let me know what you'd like to talk about. I'd love to get into details about uh, what the variety of farms are, how we can work on having a variety of farms um, outside of just soybeans and corn. So this is a lot of soybeans and corn, um, unbelievable amount uh, that basically feeds cattle and also cars. So here is the soil map. I'll zoom out a little bit more so you can see uh, some of this into Canada. Um, but there is basically a global soil map. I'll have a link in this in the picture and you can see how the soil compares to other regions in on Earth. So again, let me know if you have any questions. I love to talk with you about how to work together. Um, we're trying to set up some farming tours and some other things. I'll post some links on how to do that. Might be fun if you live in one of these large cities. Try go visit a farm. Um, again, there's three different seasons um, like we talked about. So you can uh, maybe visit during the planting season, then visit during the uh, growing season, and then visit during the harvest season. So there's basically a lot of different uh, things that you can do in terms of that. So, uh, and then definitely take a look at, careful look at this map. Um, it'll be fun to see, uh, sorry, it's loading kind of slowly here. So there's just so many great farms. Um, even in the town I live in, it's really amazing what a really small farm can do. So there uh, is a family friend of ours. They started a little farm uh, on a small lot, maybe about an acre, and they provide food to hundreds, maybe even a thousand or more people in our town just on a small little lot. Um, and it's really amazing. So I hope you liked this discussion. Um, it was a little bit of work and I'd like to try to keep working on some of the details. Let me know what you have to say. I'd be glad to try to work with you. Thank you so much. Have a great day.